Okay, so you've just modded your Nintendo Switch console. You've got the mod chip installed, everything's working properly, but you're currently at the no SD screen and don't know what to do next. Well, if that's you, then in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to fully set up the custom firmware on your Nintendo Switch console. All you're going to need to follow this guide is a micro SD card and a computer. I'm gonna cover everything today, including installing your homebrew apps, your custom firmware, your bootloader, and also setting up an emu NAND and creating NAND backups, just in case anything goes wrong with your console in the future. So without further ado, let's get into the video. But first, here's a message from today's video sponsor, JLC PCB. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the cheapest and best way to get your PCBs printed professionally. They offer lots of customization on PCBs, including the color of the silk screen, thickness of the boards, and lots of other things that you need to make your PCB perfect. They offer a top-notch quality service at low, affordable prices. They also offer 3D printing and CNC machining, making them the perfect solution for all of your project's needs. Go to the link in the description below to get your PCBs professionally printed today. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, so this is the Nintendo Switch that I'm going to be using today. This is my modded Nintendo Switch OLED. What we're going to first do is put the micro SD card into the console. And then we're going to turn the console on until we see the PicoFly screen. And then to get to the official firmware, we're going to press both of the volume buttons together. Once we're booted into the official firmware, go ahead and go down to System Settings, go down to System, and what we want to do here is format the micro SD card. This is to ensure that it's the correct file system and overall that our console is willing to recognize it. Go ahead and click Continue. Once the formatting is completed, the console is going to reboot to the PicoFly screen. At this point, you can click the power button once to turn the console off, remove the micro SD card and plug it into your computer. I'm going to use a little USB to micro SD adapter like this one. Next, you want to head over to the link in the description below to the Aesthetic Hats Pack page. Now what this is, is a pack which is going to contain all our homebrew and everything we need to get started. Once you're on this page, go ahead and select the latest version and head down until you see the download button. Go ahead and click this and it's going to download a zip file for you. Open it in either WinRAR or 7-zip and copy all of the contents to your micro SD card. Once all of those files are copied, we can go ahead and remove the micro SD card from our computer and put it back in our console. Then we can turn the console on by clicking the power button and we will be greeted with the Hakate bootloader. Go ahead and set the time as instructed. So what we want to do is firstly go over to tools Go to Partition SD Card, click OK, and drag the red slider up to 12 gigabytes. This is going to partition a piece of our micro SD card over to the EMU NAND. Once we've selected 12 gigabytes, go ahead and press the power button, and this is going to make a backup of our micro SD. Partition the SD card properly and then restore the backup of all the homebrew files we copied Once that's done click OK click close and go back to home then go to MUMMC and click create MUMMC Click SD partition and select part 1 This is now going to begin creating your MU NAND this might take a little while just leave it to run And once it's done, go ahead and click close, go back to home, 
go to launch and select MU MMC custom firmware. We can check if we booted into the EMU NAND by checking the serial numbers in system settings. If they all say zeros, then you've done this correctly. Next, we reboot the console into Hakate by simply selecting restart. And we can go down to the bottom right to reboot and select OFW, which stands for official firmware. This is the official firmware without any mods, so you can use this to go online and you can use this to connect to the eShop and Nintendo services and all that fun stuff. Next we need to reboot the console into Hakate to make a backup of our NAND. This is kind of like a backup in case anything goes wrong or our system gets bricked. To do this go to tools, go to backup eMMC and select the backup emu mmc boot 0 and boot 1. Once that one's done, go ahead and go down to emu mmc raw and we want to make a backup of this one as well. This is going to take a while but is a very essential step. Once we've backed up the NAND, we also want to back up our console's keys. To do this, go to home go to payloads and select lockpick RCM. Rotate the console and use the power button to select dump from sysnand. Then press any other button and use the volume down button to go down to reboot to Hakate and click the power button. Then go ahead and select power off and turn the console off. We want to make sure that all those backups we just made are nice and safe and secure. So what we're going to do is remove the micro SD from the console, put it into the computer, and there's going to be a folder called backup on the root of the micro SD card. Go ahead and copy this to somewhere secure on your hard drive and make multiple copies if you need to. I recommend putting at least one copy on some form of cloud storage such as Google Drive or Dropbox. You can now delete the backup folder from your micro SD to save some space and reinsert the micro SD back into your console. Now to access all of our modded stuff, we want to go to launch and go to emu MMC. Unlock the console and go ahead and head over to the album and this is going to open the homebrew menu and as you can see the hats pack included lots of apps for us to play with. Okay, so if you've made it this far into the video, you now have a Nintendo Switch completely modded with the custom firmware set up to perfection. If you did find this video helpful, then leave me a comment down below. Make sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to have lots of more tutorials like this coming soon, so if you like them, then stay tuned. For now, enjoy your modded Switch. Big thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. As always, their links will be in the top of the description. That's it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.